it's important that people are taught the word. It's not about it's not about the hype and the jumping and the there's a time for that. But many, many times you know that if you're really gonna, even in your home, if you are going to grow sound children, you're gonna do more teaching than parting. Amen. There's the party we can all jump, but they say they, most of it is teaching. So I think teaching is critical. I think that is the thing that is missing in the church. I think a lot of people um, don't understand what the kingdom is and how things function in the kingdom. And so they come in and they bump when they come into the kingdom and things don't work for them. And they're wondering, does God really work? Because they were introduced to a gospel that just shouts about stuff. And they were not really introduced to a kingdom of God. They were introduced to the shouting and to the screaming, but never got introduced to the kingdom. Amen. When you got born again, you came into a kingdom. And I believe that the days, if you don't believe me, just go home today, put CNN and get your Bible. Put your, put, put your CNN, on, put CNN, on, CNN on and get your Bible in Matthew 24. You are going to see exactly what Jesus said in Matthew 24 is happening now. In the same country, one side is flooding, the other side, they, they are fires. In one side, there's wars over the Jesus already said it, but you know, the people reduce it to climate change. Even if there was not one car ever made, not one smoke that ever went up, if Jesus says something, it will happen. So it's not climate change. Don't get now caught up with, oh, it's climate change, it's climate change, and you are running for climate change. It is the Lord. The Lord said, this earth, when Satan sinned, that was it. When Satan messed up and he sinned in heaven and he got thrown down here and he messed up Adam, that was it. The earth has to get to a place where it's going to end. We cannot stay here forever in the same atmosphere. We'll be back here on earth, but the earth needs renovations. There's so many sinful places on the planet. There are certain things that the devil does you should don't even know about. Things done in the dark. God has to revamp the planet and bring a brand new planet so that it destroys all the high places on the planet. Amen. That is why the planet is the way it is. Now, I don't want to go into end times. Amen. I just thought I would <laughs> say that. I'm talking to you about faith checkup. Um, I said to you last week that if I say to the people, what is, how do you get faith? People, everybody here will say, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's the definition. But what does it mean to you? How, how does faith come? How do you proceed and do stuff where you've got the stuff that first I learned? That I, we were talking about some of the things yesterday. Some of the things that I endeavor to do purely based on the hunch, on the hearing, it, sometimes I look back and I thought, like, was I crazy when I did that? But then it worked. Because whatever Jesus says will always work. Now, I'm not going to go back into everything that I taught. You can go and download the podcast. They are free. We were the podcast of all the messages we speak. If you go on Faith Checkup, you're going to see there's a podcast on our website from the first message to where I am now. So you can listen to the other one so that you don't get... Can I just have a bit more mic on my thing so that I can, you know... So you don't, you don't have to worry and say, oh, I didn't hear the first message. You can go back and you can hear that message again and you can, you'll be going much better. All right. Now, I don't know if my slides are on there. If you can flash them, if you manage to, to, get, to get them going there, I know. There we go. Okay. This is the thing. This is so important. Without a rhema word or a thing said, there cannot be faith present. Now, we're going to look here at, because we've been taught that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's what we've been taught. So we've got this idea that when I am speaking to you now, you are hearing me, therefore you've got faith already. That's what we've been taught. So we've got this assumption that when we are hearing a pastor preach, we actually have faith. That is when we take our Bible and we go and we command the car and the car never comes, even though we thought we had faith. I mean, how many of you guys have ever tried in the past? Be honest now, don't lie, it's a Sunday. How many of you guys have ever tried in the past? You thought you had the faith. And you went ahead to try and get it done, and it never worked. 
Hello? I have tried it. I'm talking about, you see, we always talk about the things we got. This is the problem in the church. The pastors especially, we always talk about the things we achieved. We never talk about the places we failed. Sometimes the places where we fail do teach people more. I have been to many, many places where I have failed trying to get this thing done as I started faith. Yeah. I have been encouraged by people, Pastor, well, you know, go, let's go raise a dead man. And I went to raise a dead man. I mean, I, I, I listened to messages being preached. I believed in the scriptures. And I went to the morgue and I commanded that dead body to come to life. And that dead body never came to life. This man was maybe in his early 30s or maybe late 20s and it passed on. All of us know that it's not God's will that this man had to die at 30. Because God has already given you the age of a man. We knew that 30 is not God's will, but this guy died in any case. Now, in our minds, we take that scripture, the, the, the years of many shall be three score and ten. So we take the scriptures, we take the Bible, we confess the word, and we go ahead and we want to get that body off. I did that. I had my Bible ready. I was listening to preaching tapes. I, had, I mean, I, was, I believed I was receiving faith. If I had that faith, even as small as a mustard seed, how come that faith never worked when I got there? Because Jesus said, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you say to a mountain, You've been trying to say to more hills, and the more hills have not been moving. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so 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 what, what what's what's going on here now? That's why I went into the study because I was tired of making it work and it didn't want to work. Then the Lord began to reveal to me some of the things I'm teaching you now. That is how we have managed to buy this building and other buildings and other things that God is doing and other things that God opened up. I only managed to get there when I learned this. You understand? Now, so without a rhema word, a rhema word is, a Greek, is the Greek word for a thing said. We're going to look at it in the next slide. For a thing said, okay? And, and, and without a... Th now, when you read um, Romans chapter 10, verse 17, can we just flash it, please, if you don't mind? I didn't give it to you. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. I want to show you something there in the KJV because I don't want to give you my own opinions. I want to give you word. You understand what I'm saying? You know, that's what we are here for. So then faith cometh. You must read why there is a so then. But I don't have time to read the so then. If whenever you see a so then, read why there is a so then. Because it's a whole scripture there. But anyway, it begins to say, So then faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by rhema Christos. That's what it says in the, in the Greek. Hearing by rhema Christos. So faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Now it's translated the word of God. So it throws you out because... You, th you hear Pastor Wellington preach the word of God and you think, yeah, faith is coming because I'm hearing the word of God. But the faith here, the hearing he speaks about is hearing by the Rema Christos. Rema means an uttered word and Christos means an anointing. So faith comes by an anointed uttered word. Faith comes by an anointed Uttered words. So faith comes by hearing the words, yes. But the substance of that faith comes by a, an uttered, uh, an anointed uttered word. All right. Now, what does that mean? The only person who's got an anointed uttered word is Jesus. When Jesus tells you something, when it comes into you, that thing Jesus says comes with the anointing to make it work. So, very important. Let's go to the TPT in the book of John chapter 5 from verse 1 to 9 in the TPT. John chapter 5. from. We're going to look at a story here that, is, that puzzled me when I read it. It puzzled me. We're going, to, we're going to read a few scriptures, but I think this is important. Then Jesus returned to Jerusalem to observe one of the Jewish holy days. Inside the city near the sheep gate, there is a pool called in Aramaic, Remember, Jesus did not speak Hebrew. Jesus spoke Aramaic. 
Aramaic was the language that had been brought into Israel by the Babylonian Empire. The Babylonian Empire colonized the entire Israel area, the entire Jewish area, and they brought their languages. I taught you on colonization before that when a foreign power brings its power into that country, they also bring their language. That is why when you got born again, God colonized you and he brought tongues to you. Because whenever another entity takes over another entity, they'll bring their way of living to that entity. So here, Jesus spoke Aramaic. Most of the, the disciples spoke Aramaic. And, and so here, we see that there was a gate in the pool called in, called in Aramaic, the house of, the, of loving kindness. In, 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 in Aramaic, it's called Bethesda. Bethesda. We know about the pool of Bethesda, right? So this is the same pool, but it's in the TPT, so they make it easier for you to understand, especially some of you kids that were born the other day. You don't understand Bethesda, so bring it easy for you. So it was called in Aramaic, the house of, the, of loving kindness. And this pool is surrounded by five covered porches. Now think of Kingsway Hospital. It was like Kingsway Hospital. It had five wards, if you now term. You can call it wards. It had five wards, okay? Now go down. This is important. I, want, I don't want you to think of checkers and your chicken and your chicken licken. Just concentrate because this can help you have all the chicken licken you want in the world. So, this, so, so it was covered with five porches. Hundreds of sick people were lying there on the porches. Somebody say hundreds. Hundreds, not two people, hundreds of sick people were lying there on the porches. The paralyzed were there, the blind were there, the crippled were there waiting for healing. Even the stupid were there waiting for healing. <laughs> no, that's just Pastor Wellington's version. So all of them were waiting for healing. How many were there? Hundreds. All right, it's important. Go to next, next verse. I want to show you something. For an angel of God would periodically descend onto the pool to stir the waters. And the first one who stepped into the pool after the water swelled or the waters were swelling like that, uh, you know, or whatever, would instantly be healed. Now there was a man who had been disabled for 38 years lying among the multitude of sick people. Somebody say multitude of sick people. There's one man who's lying there for 38 years, among us, so many sick people. Verse 6. When Jesus saw him lying there, he knew that the man had been crippled for a long time. So Jesus said to him, do you truly long to be healed? Surely he's asking him that question. Why would Jesus ask this guy, do you want to be healed? Because Jesus cannot give you what you don't want. Okay. So many times I'll ask people, what are you believing God for? Do you want to be okay? If they tell me, no, I, wanna, I don't want to be okay, they can't be healed without them agreeing with it. Okay? So anyway, so the sick man answered him, say, there's no way I can get healed for I have no one who will lower me into the water when the angel comes. As soon as I try to crawl to the edge of the pool, someone else jumps in ahead of me. Then Jesus said to him, stand up, pick up your sleeping mat, and you will walk. So we know here that this man has been healed by what you call, if you read the book of, I think, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, we'll go read that whole book. It's talking to you about special gifts. One of the gifts is called a gift of faith. A gift of faith is what Smith Wigglesworth had. A gift of faith is when you can get people healed that don't even know God. This guy didn't even know who Jesus was. If you keep reading, you're going to find out later when they ask him who healed you, he did not know who had healed him. So which means he had no faith in God at all. So here, God says to him, pick up your sleeping mat and you will walk. Watch what he does. Immediately he stood up. He was healed, so he rolled up his mat and walked again. Now this miracle took place on the Jewish Sabbath. Now, we understand that it took place on a Sabbath day, which means Jesus did not have any work to do. It was just a Sunday. It was, well, I'm saying, no, but it was a Jewish Sabbath. It was on a Saturday. So he, was, he had nothing much to do. He was just probably just, you know, uh, you know, doing his work and he had no way to go. But yet Jesus comes and he heals one man. How many men were there? Hundreds of men. I'm not talking about, I'm saying men, I'm not talking about gender, I'm talking about the speeches of men. There were hundreds of men, multitudes. Like, if you look, think of Kingsway Hospital with different wards. They were all covered. And yet Jesus goes through all those wards and he goes to one man only. 
I want to ask you this question. Did Jesus have the power to heal everybody? <laughs> Could Jesus heal all of them? No, he couldn't. <laughs> Come with me to... Um, it's the same scripture, right? Let's go to the same book of John where we are now. Jump to verse 30. I, 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 you know, in, in the Amplified, go to verse 30. <laughs> All right, you, you ask me, verse 30. Let's, let's go to verse 30. Let me finish. Maybe I'll answer you when I'm saying this. So it says, this is Jesus talking. Somebody say, Jesus is talking. I am able to do nothing from myself, independently of my own accord, but only as I am taught by God and as I get his orders, even as I hear. He is talking about the same healing. This is John chapter 5. I wrote you from verse 1 to 9. The people are questioning him, how did you heal on a Sabbath? How did you make that man to walk? Jesus says, I'm able to do nothing from myself, independently. That is the key. Of my own accord, but only as I am taught by God and as I get his orders, even as I hear, I judge. Watch here. I decide as I am bidden to decide. This is so important. As the voice comes to me, so I give a decision. So the reason why Jesus couldn't heal the people is because no voice came saying, heal everyone. The voice that came said, Heal the 38 year old cripple. That's the voice that he heard. That's the person that he healed. Watch here. Jesus, the Son of God, walks right through the entire Kingsway Hospital, walks right out of Kingsway Hospital, leaving the old gogos who were vomiting, dying, leaving the paralyzed, the blind, some of them that had been sick there for years and years. Jesus does not look and heal them. He goes past everyone and goes back home only after healing one person. Because if the voice doesn't come, you could not do it. The faith to do it comes out of the voice that comes to you. That's where you get the faith to get the person healed. Without that, you can't get it done. I went to a morgue. I prayed for that sick person. I tried to get them out. But though I had the scriptures, though I had the word, though I was confessing scripture, I had no voice that said, go and raise him up. Even though I went there, I had no faith for it, even though I thought I had word. Because without the voice, there cannot be substance to the things that you are going to do. Come on, give the Lord a hand of praise and a shout in the house of God this morning. You see, this can liberate you. If you understand, it, what, so we're going to talk here about what, where does the Bible come in. We're going to show you just now. The will of, this is the will of God. God wants everybody here healed. Everybody here rich. Everyone. But the how-to is the substance that comes from the Father to you. The how-to. I want to buy this building. I know it's God's will for me to have a church in this building. I don't have 5.3 million rand for this building. It's on special for 5.3. I'm telling you, it was on special for that price. I don't have 5.3 million to buy the building. I don't know how I'm going to get. Watch here. While I'm praying in the spirit, I'm waiting on God. I hear a voice in me. It says, the building shall be given to you by a widow. It says there's going to be a miracle of the widow. Go read 1 Kings chapter 17. So I went to read 1 Kings chapter 17. And God says there is going to be a miracle of a widow. Ask my wife. I'm spending time looking for a widow. I'm telling you, I'm asking, Pastor, do you think that's the widow over there? I'm trying to figure out where that widow is. You can ask it. Because the word came saying it's going to be a widow. I've got it written in my Bible exactly where God told me and the time and the date. It's in my Bible. He says it's going to be a widow. We're waiting on God, we're waiting on God, we're waiting on God, one praying, and then God led us directly. When we came here, we tried to phone the agent. The agent never picked up the phone. So we decided to come on our own, and we ended up meeting the owner. Lo and behold, the owner is a widow. The husband had passed away when he was only about 40 from, from summer cancer, and the owner was a widow for indeed. And she was like the widow of Zarephath because the municipality and other people were busy removing meters of this building. They wanted to repossess. She was owing hundreds of thousands in um, 
you know, in different fees for utilities, and she was owing the, the you know, the, the municipality. They wanted to repossess the building. Why she, the widow said in the book of First Kings, I'm going to eat my last meal, and then I'm going to die. Because what was about to happen, the following day, we arrived today, the following day, the municipality was going to come and remove the meters from the building. And we met today. And this was a widow. She had also a son. <laughs> and, and, and God said, it's going to be a widow. Watch what happens. We, and because I know that is going to be a widow, I begin to move like Elijah. I know I must be blessing her. I must be the miracle for this lady. So I gave her the word of the Lord that the Lord had given me. And this widow said, I don't know God. I don't understand anything about God. But anything that you said about this and me is exactly what it is. And the rest is history. God said it, I did it, she did, and the rest is history. And it's four years now and we're here. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, before me, there were two other pastors that prayed in tongues for the building. That confessed the word for this same building. Brachis. Really? It's African for real. It's sure. I mean, it's, it's truly. I'm telling you now. It's, it's, they, they, they were praying in the spirit. They were praying in tongues. They were praying. And they were nice guys because I met, even, I mean, you know, one of the guys I, I, I've seen is a nice guy. Probably nicer than me. Humble. Prayed in the spirit. Fasted. Believed God as a church for this building. They still didn't get it. Which means they did not get hungry enough. Maybe I fasted more. Maybe God liked me more. Why couldn't they get the building yet they were pastors? Well, they couldn't. Why? Because they did not receive the voice that said, that is your building. Therefore, they had no substance for the building. In the garden of the fasting, the reading, the cry, because the only way faith comes is when you are impressed in your spirit, then it will always work. So now, you're running ahead. This is, God is so faithful. Let me tell you, family. Lift up your hands, everybody, and say, God, you are so faithful. Everybody. God will talk to you every time. I, I work with a lot of, um, you know, some of my guys that are close to us. We work daily. We speak daily. Sometimes I might pick up the phone and try and phone one of them. And then their phone is on voicemail. Or maybe it's off, or maybe they're somewhere... Now, the point is, I have made the call to them. I spoke. I wanted to speak something to them. I'm intending to speak to them. But on their side, their line is blocked from hearing me. I might have something really good for them at that second. I'm at the airport, and I want to give them a handsome amount of money at the airport because I have to leave. But because they did not hear my answer at that time, they lost out. It was not my fault. It was their fault. Because without hearing my voice, it's impossible to please me. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Family, am I confusing you or are you getting something? Now, we're going to go here. Maybe I'll answer, <laughs> I'll answer your answer question here if it's not answered. Let's go to the next slide. This is so important. We take care of the Logos. The Holy Spirit takes care of the Rhema. Okay, what is Logos? Logos is the Greek word for written word. Logos means written word. All right? And Rhema means uttered word. So there are two different types of words, the written word and the uttered word. The written word brings us to understanding the will of God for our lives. I know you are not supposed to be sick because God doesn't want you sick. So we know it's in the will. We know it's in the will that all our bills should be paid because the Bible says that he became poor so that we might become rich. We know it's his will. We know that. We, not, we know that by reading Logos. We know that. But this is a big Bible. So, so we're going to have to be led. Now, I'm going to try and guide here um, with Scripture. 
the Holy Spirit is the most important person on the planet. I'm telling you, if you don't know this, the Holy Ghost will be something you talk about when you are preaching, but something you don't walk with. He is the most important. That's why Jesus said, as I hear the voice, and he says, Father, you are in me, and I'm in you, and we are one. What was in Jesus? The Father, through the Holy Ghost, was in Jesus. So they were one. So that's why I said, it's better I go so that I can send him so that you can become exactly the way I was. Because Jesus did all these miracles as a man, not as God. Because if he did them as God, there was no way for him to say, you would do bigger miracles than this. He says you do greater miracles than these. If he was God, then would have been finished because we can never be like God. But he did this an anointed man who was anointed by the Holy Spirit. That's why I prayed and said, Father, if it's your will, let this cup pass. Because as a man, it was getting to his flesh. As a man, all right? No, we take care of the Lord God and the, and the Holy Spirit takes care of the rhema. So the Holy Ghost is the most important aspect of a person in our lives and he dwells in you. Now, why do you think you've got the Holy Spirit in you? So that you can speak in tongues. Because when you are speaking in tongues, it's your spirit speaking in tongues. Your spirit is speaking in tongues. Your spirit is searching the heart of the Holy Spirit. You are speaking in tongues. So, God had no Maybe God had no way to stay. Maybe it was crowded in heaven. And God was looking for where the Holy Spirit would stay. So, he figured out, ah, let's just get them born again. Let's put you in these people, man. So that they can fall on the altar call when they get prayed for. The Holy Spirit is not just for you falling down and quickening. Although he can do that. The Holy Ghost was not put in you so that you can fall down and you can act weird. His primary job in you, primary, is to give you the Bible back to you in a rhema word. His primary job is to give you words. Primary job. He, he quickens you. That's how Jesus knew this, there, are, there are thousands here, yeah, but there's only one man I need to touch. So Jesus walks there. The Holy Spirit tells him, that one, that one, that one. And he only goes on to that one. And he says to him, don't touch anybody else. His job is to quicken you. There are many people that are buried and dead today that should have been alive because they never listened to the Holy Spirit. They just ran with Psalms 91 without listening to the Holy Ghost. Because your desires can come in. I've seen people that have married the, somebody else that you are not supposed because they said like, you know, it, it was their last pulling them. But the Holy Ghost might not have agreed. Now, I want to show you something just now. That is very important. John chapter 14, verse 21. Oh, we're in John today in the Amplified. And I'm trying to do John. John chapter 14, verse 21. The person who has my commandments and keeps them is the one who really loves me. How do you know you love God? Not by telling him how much you love him. There is how you know. The person who has my commands and keeps them, this is where the Logos is so important. The Logos is the written word. When I take the word of God and I confess it over my life, I am keeping the word regardless of what I am seeing. Thank you, Father God, by your stripes I am healed. Thank you, Father God, you became poor that I might become rich. Thank you, Father God, that I'm the head only and never the tail. Thank you, Father God, that my fans will not cast their fruit before the time in the field. Thank you, Father God, that I am rich and I'm blessed and I'm anointed and I've got all that I need. Thank you, very fa Father God, that I'm the head and never the tail. I'm above only. I shall never be beneath. Thank you, Father God, that you are doing deals for me. You're opening up doors. I've got properties in this area and properties in that area. God is opening up doors in those. And you are speaking and you are speaking. What am I doing? This is so important. I am not speaking that word to call that property in. Because you've been taught, call it in. Speak it, brother. Speak the word. So you've been given a sense of go to whatever you see, call it, and it will be yours. And you have tried, and you jammed right then. It never happened. 
So because he went to the house, say, speak to your future. And he spoke to that house. And the house said, nah, mm-mm, near. I don't want. Sorry, boy. The house refused. Why? Because you, there's this aspect, all we do, we take the word, we speak to it. Listen to me very carefully. When you're speaking the word of God, you don't command until the voice. Before the rhema comes, you are confessing to stay in the atmosphere of hearing. The confessions you are making is getting your heart sensitive to the rhema because the rhema can be so small when it comes. If you're not sensitive enough, you will begin to reason and miss the rhema. If I reasoned, I would not have 90% of what I've ever bought in my life. I would have reasoned. I don't have enough education for that. I don't have enough money for that. In fact, look, I was blacklisted. I would have gone with my reasoning. But because I was so sensitive by staying in the logos, taking that logos and saying it to myself. Why am I saying it to myself? So that I don't doubt. I'm not saying to bring it to me. I'm saying it so that my heart is ready for the rhema. Once the rhema comes, I'll go right behind those two pastors and grab that building. I'm not coming here to cause, and you know, so because because that's the way we've been taught. So we just run ahead and and you know, and there's too much noise but no results. So the person who has my commandments and keeps them, this is the guy that is saying, Father, I know my needs are met. I know it looks like they want to repossess this house, but Father, I know your word says that they will not, no, no, no donkey of mine will be violently removed from my house. Do not be 28. I know, Father God, that I'm the head only and not the tail. I know, Father God, that I'm protected, I'm covered. The angel of the Lord is round about me and nothing can come to my house. I'm protected. What am I doing? I am speaking that word, keeping my heart sensitive for the how-to. In the how-to is the power. So what she says, it keeps them. Now, I want to read the whole thing. because I want to, so, so, so the word I confess, the preaching tapes. Pastor Lee and I, in our atmosphere, we're constantly listening to preaching. Not all preaching. I don't listen to every... Jick and Jill, Harry, Tommy, whatever. I listen to specific people only. And sometimes I listen to myself. Because I want to hear the thing again because I forgot what it was. I'm telling you, I listen to myself. And I thought, wow, did I say it? I said, oh, wow, it was good. I listen to myself all the time. You've got a podcast that is free to download. Listen. You can never hear rhema if you're not surrounding yourself with the word of God. So I saturate myself with the word. I'm in the car is the word. I'm at the office working, doing something is the word. I'm at home, it is the word. Like last yesterday in the evening, I just went there on YouTube and I was just listening, listening, laughing. Sometimes I'm laughing on my own. I'm listening, I'm watching. Sometimes I go home after work and I see Pastor Lee there. She's busy sitting there watching, you know, preaching the whole time. Why are we doing it? So that we look holy or we are good. Oh, God is going to think we are happy. We are good kids. No, we're not doing it to look like we are good kids. We're keeping our data on. So when the WhatsApp comes, we are sensitive to see it. If your data is off and I'm trying to get a hold of you, two hours later, I've flown out already. Your data was off. So you're not sensitive enough to my WhatsApp. But when I keep surrounded, I'm keeping my data on. Hello? Uh, that's why I don't even want garbage. Don't come and tell me no lie. I'm going to smack you in your jaws. Don't come tell me no lie. I don't want no garbage. Why? Because I'm waiting for my rhema. I, my life is too precious to talk about garbage. I have to have a rhema because it's life and death for me. I have to have a rhema. I got to know. I got to understand what's, gonna, what's going on. Sometimes you wake up like last week. We woke up and Eli had this, you know, you know it's like a, a, a bit of a, you know, it was like a rush that was, you know, suddenly from nowhere. And I prayed for Eli. I laid my hands. And the more I laid my hands, the more it came. I forgot that I preached this. So I was praying and I said, Father, what do I do? What, what, does it, 
what scripture and your word must I use for this? It didn't come the first day. It didn't come. Then it just happened in the afternoon. The Lord said, call him and speak to it and rebuke it now. Use the scripture. I called him in the afternoon. Just in the door. I said, come, come here. And I laid the hands and I rebuked that thing. And from that time onwards, it began to dry and it's dying and there's no more itch. How come I could not get it done the two, three days? Because I was doing it religiously. Bring it, bring it, bring it, bring it. You know, and we just lay hands. You know, that's the faith folk. We don't even wait to listen. We're just laying hands on it. Oh, my goodness. The religious cows. When we get to the end of this, you're going to be liberated. So, so, so it says, the one who really loves me keeps my commandments. You will be loved by my father. So you, keeping the commandments is the logos aspect of it. It's spending time. It's speaking. It's listening to preaching all the time. Because if you're listening to Beyonce the whole time, Oh, the single light is dumb. Bop, 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 bop. You're listening to that. I would tell how much rema you hear by the type of stuff you listen to. Whatever you listen to, you are sensitive to that which you're listening to. Your spiritual man is sensitive to Beyonce and to whoever. They're nice people. But you, are, you can't even hear God. People come and ask me, how do I know God spoke to me? How do, how do I know Pastor Lee spoke to me? How do you guys know when Pastor Lee speaks to you? You know your voice. Thank you. How do you know when Pastor Bula Bula speaks to you? How many of you know Pastor Bula Bula? He's out there somewhere in India. This is the thing. Mr. Bula Bula, even though he's alive somewhere, you don't know him. Therefore, you don't know his voice. So even if he spoke to you, you don't even know if he's Bula Bula or not. Amen. How many of you believe that your neighbor is going to take you for the royal lunch? <laughs> okay. I'll drink something here. <laughs> Watch this. Wait, wait. Okay. Nobody here. You see, you don't have enough confidence. You know why? Even though you believe, but you don't have the rhema from your neighbor for the lunch. If your neighbor whispered to you and say, your neighbor say that, now you've got a rhema word from your neighbor for the lunch. Now you've got substance to actually go and have lunch with your neighbor. And you're going to tell everybody, I'm going to have lunch at such and such a place. Why? Because you got rhema from your neighbor. Without rhema from your neighbor, you can believe I'm taking you for lunch and I ain't taking nobody. You can believe and believe and believe and believe and believe. But I never say that. So rhema is what I need in order for it to work. Can you hear what I'm saying? I can be the nicest guy in the world. I can be the nicest person in the world. But if I don't give you the voice, the words, the instruction, you cannot win without it. You can't. You are done. You are finished. You can't. Otherwise, this thing will be based on who says it the loudest. So therefore, here, so he says here, you spend time in the Logos, you are listening to preaching, you are listening to the word of God, you are listening to tapes, you are reading your word in the morning. Why? You are being sensitive, you are putting word in. The same word you put in is the same word you're going to get back. That's how it works. It comes back to you with interest. It comes back to you with rhema. Without the word being put in, you can't hear anything. That's why the Bible says, even after Jesus did miracles, go read it. Jesus would have done outstanding miracles. Then the Bible says he withdrew to pray on his own. Why? Because when he withdrew, he was now ready again to shut out everything and to hear new rhema for the next mission. Amen. So here he says, I have to finish this and we're going to die. We'll be done. So he says, he loves me, will be loved by my father, and I too will love him. And will sh Now this is, this is what I... So he says, this guy that is spending time confessing over his life, listening to this preaching tape, spending time in the Word, he says, this same guy, he loves me. Then he will be loved by my Father and I too. We will love him and will show, reveal, manifest. So we will love him and will show, reveal, manifest myself to him. I will let myself be clearly seen by him and make myself real to him. 
No, no. This is the guy who's confessing the word of his life. This is the guy who doesn't move without the rhema. Jesus said, no, no, no. The word of God and keeping it is not enough. When you keep on keeping the word, what's going to happen is we are going to jump into you. We are going to manifest. In other words, we're going to give you the direction. We're going to give you the voice. We're going to clearly make ourselves known to you. We're going to show you not number five, not number eight, by number 12. Because number 12 will have your name on it. You are not just going to shoot scatter shots. This time, we'll tell you everything on the head and you hit the head sometimes because you are not just playing guesswork, try and error, but now you've got an action from the Spirit to say that is your job, that is the place you stay, that is the church you go to, that is the house, you, the, the husband you marry. Now you've got a clear manifestation of who I am and let me introduce this to you family. That's exactly where I live. I get clear directions from the Lord sometimes detailed. And I know exactly what to do, but I don't get it just sitting around watching James Bond the whole day. I get it as I wait on the Lord, as I wake up early to seek the Lord. Every day, every day, every day, I'm up after four o'clock like I'm going to the airport. Daily up after four. Daily. Someone say, oh, you must have your eight hours so to look beautiful. Some are sleeping ten hours, they're looking just as ugly as before. I'm not you, but I'm just saying. Everybody here is good looking. So I'll get up early every day. I'm not getting up early so that God will be happy. Forget about God being happy. When he gave Jesus, he already loved you. He's happy. But God's happiness won't meet your bills. Do you understand? So I woke up early in the morning to seek God. So when I am praying... I am praying, listening to my heart because I have noticed out of my belly flows the stuff I need. So, because I know I'm going to get a lot of questions. Do we do this? Don't we do this? Do we... While this, I am waiting on the Lord, I get instructions. Don't do that today. Do this. Sometimes I'll just say, let's not do it. Not because the funds can be available, but I just won't do it that day because God didn't want me to do it that day. Because if I did that day, that thing was going to fall and kill that same guy. Amen. So it says, I'll clearly manifest myself. Go verse 20. We're going to close with this. I have to finish the scripture because I've got so much and I don't have time. So Judas, they need to make sure that it's not the bad guy. Not his carrier asked him, Lord, how is it that you will reveal yourself? Make yourself real to us and not to the world. I mean, how is this thing going to work? You're going to, make, you're going to make yourself so apparent. When he says, I reveal myself to you, he's trying to say, I will instruct you in a way that you can actually know it's me. Now, that instruction, I can't teach that. All I know, God is faithful. If you, keep, if you spend the time wanting to be close to him, reading your word, listening to the Bible, getting all the garbage, you will hear the rhema. If you still cross about what they said and what she said, don't go about what they said. You can't change people. For me, I figured out that I can't change people's opinions. They can think whatever they want to think about me. I don't care. Because that's their opinion. I know me, so you can think what you want, but I know me. So I'm not going to be, you know, having sleepless nights over your junk. Okay, I don't care. It doesn't even move me. People can say he's the ugliest guy I've ever seen on a pulpit. It doesn't matter. I knew I was ugly before I came to preach, so what's the problem? I don't get offended by anything. Why? Because I do not want garbage to come into my heart and therefore stop the thing I need to hear for the next move. We went through lockdown. We don't owe anybody anything. We're not behind in areas of any kind with all the different buildings, nothing. Everything paid up to date. There's no, nothing. Do you know how it happens? People are losing businesses. We heard the Lord say, a week before lockdown, close Cafe Eden, shut everything up, get rid of everyone. A week before lockdown. We didn't know there was going to be lockdown. Then a week later, we heard, oh, there will be lockdown. And nobody knew what it was. God warned us. Because had we not done that, we'd have to carry those wages throughout lockdown. But God knew a week before, don't do it. Because my ear has to be hearing the revealed word of God. Okay? 
So the Lord, so 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 you reveal yourself, you make yourself real to you, and whatever, whatever to us and not to the world. He's asking a question, verse 23. Um, uh, it says, Jesus answered, If a person really loves me, he will keep my word, obey my teaching, and my father will love him. So, in other words, he keeps on in the word, confessing the word, speaking over his own life, who not the building, your own life, speaking over your heart so that your heart stays sensitive. Then my father will love him and will come to him and make our home. Our home. I mean, he's coming to stay, man. Somebody say he's coming to stay. Our, it's a special dwelling place with him. Verse 24. You need to see something here before you go. Anyone who does not really love me does not observe and obey my teaching. In other words, if you're not confessing the word of God over your life, if you're not reading your word, if you're not speaking to your word, God says you don't really love him. It's not like you, what you think. You better go by what the book says. He says, you love me when you keep my word. Like what Pastor Lee showed you about Job. Job never sinned one with his mouth. In other words, Job kept on decreeing what God said about it. The people on their way to destroy them, he kept on saying, God is my refuge and my tower. Nothing can happen to me. He kept on decreeing that he, he didn't go and point, what are we going to do? He didn't go to what are we going to do type of junk. He went and said, the word says, so even if they take it, I stand on the word. And the teaching which you hear and heed is not mine, but comes from the Father who sent me. I have told you these things while I am still with you. Now, the last thing, this is so important, you need to go read it at home, verse 26. But, somebody, he's been talking about all those things. Remember? My father, blah, blah. But the comforter, the counselor, the helper, the intercessor, the advocate, the strengthener, the standby, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, in my place, to represent me and to act on my behalf. He will teach you all things. Does all mean all in Deben? He will mean all things. Even that shoe you want is part of all. I want a new car, part of all. I want a driver's license, part of all. In my house, they know even Kelak and them can tell you, when I tell them to do something, if they do it, it will always work. Jesus said, the mother of Jesus said, whatever I tell you to do, do it. It happens. It was locked down. Things were tough. You know, there was no, I told her, get your license now. Whenever they listen, and I said, she says, no, I'm, someone in my driving school is going to have to drive me. I said, no, don't worry about the driving school. You've got your learners now. You must just keep driving together with me and learn to drive with me. Lo and behold, when she followed step by step, she went the first time, wrote the license, got it. She didn't have to put 59 in somebody else's hand. She got it properly. Because as I listen to the Holy Ghost, and sometimes I'll tell people small things. I say, why don't you do this? And I can see they don't want to do it, then I leave them. But I know that that was inspired by the Holy Ghost. As they done that. I sent one day, and, and some guy, some, some time, some years back when I started, I sent him, said, can you go to that meeting on my behalf? And he agreed to go. When he go to that meeting, somebody gave him 6,000 rand just for coming to see they're listening. I'll be like, oh, I wish I'd gone myself. <laughs> no, no, I didn't do that. Somebody gave, I don't know, they ended up talking. That person sold 6,000 in his life. Imagine if he never went to the meeting. All I said, go to the meeting. He did. They did. So the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, in my place to represent me and to act on my behalf, he will teach you all things and he will cause you to recall or remind you or bring you to remembrance of everything I have told you. Now, what is everything I've told you? The word you're confessing over yourself. The logos you're confessing over yourself. When you need it, God, the Holy Spirit, is going to reveal to you all the word you've been putting in. Because when the word comes forth out of you, it comes up as a harvest with a rhema in it. So you will reveal to you. He will give you what you need to do. He will tell you, don't do that. Don't do that deal. Don't do that deal. Everybody stand to your feet. We're out of time.